Batu Bahe, Bame Radio Fiji 2 ke kon sa ke roke online clear. Radio Fiji 2, rakira ki ke log jada sunte hai. Nendi me ham sab ki pasan Radio Fiji 2. Pahle wo ke log Radio Fiji 2 sab se jada sun rahe hai. Meri pasan Radio Fiji 2, Masuri me sabhi ko pasan Radio Fiji 2. Tawa me Radio Fiji 2 sabhi ko sunte hai. Radio Fiji 2 rock. Radio Fiji 2, I love you. Desh ki dhadkan, Radio Fiji 2. Tonight on FBC News, LTA to suspend licenses of notorious offenders. More focus on disaster management and microfinance awards to recognize small businesses. Good evening, I'm Jackie Spate and this is FBC News. The Land Transport Authority is likely to suspend 60 driver's licenses in the Central Division. The drivers in question all have more than 30 infringement notices, and the LTA says ignorance of the law will not be tolerated. Savara Tamboa has the story. LTA is sending out a stern warning to motorists to change driving attitude or lose their driving license. For a driver that continues to break the law, uh, you know, he or she is showing that the sign of um, not valuing human life, and it's the work or the job of the authority to deal with these people. Uh, we are, like I said, uh, we're seen as not a fit and proper person uh, to uh, continue to travel on our roads. The authority is watching drivers with offenses such as speeding, talking on mobile phones, failure to wear seat belts, and driving with expired licenses. Some believe that suspending licenses isn't enough and that time behind bars would be a wake up call. I think they should also be sent to jail because some of them just adhere the road rules. And they don't keep to the standards of Fiji roads. In some countries, if somebody uh, runs uh, a pedestrian down, uh, they are actually uh, put into custody awaiting the trial. In two weeks, 60 drivers from the Central Division will be asked to appear at a show course hearing for notorious offenders to make their case. There is uh, a, um, an appeal process that uh, they uh, can uh, uh, go through if uh, they are not happy or disagree uh, with uh, the authority's decision. Uh, that is their right and that is open to anyone uh, being disciplined by the board. About 100 licenses have already been suspended in the Western Division this year. Any driver with more than 30 infringement notices can expect the same treatment. Sabera Tambua, FBC News. The 2014 National Microfinance Awards were launched last night in Suva. They pay tribute to key stakeholders and recognize the valuable contribution that microfinance makes to the national economy. Ritika Pratap reports. This is the second year running for the National Microfinance Awards, recognizing and supporting our budding micro-entrepreneurs. In 2013, there are approximately 4,200 micro, small and medium enterprises, or MSMEs, in Fiji, accounting for approximately 12% of our GDP, or around $800 million. MSMEs, when given the right support, have the potential to lift the economy and, con and can contribute strongly to employment, an, is an issue which has been very much at the forefront of our development and growth objectives. Whiteside says the RBF encourages commercial banks and microfinance institutions to really get involved in microfinance, not just by extending loans. I'd like them to seriously consider viable partnerships, synergies and developing innovative products and services. In recent years, microfinance providers here in Fiji have expanded their services to deliver financial education and training, entrepreneurial training, microinsurance, and various other services to budding entrepreneurs. The goals of these supplementary activities are twofold. Firstly, to improve the survival rate of the borrower's startup businesses, and secondly, to mit mitigate credit risks for the lender. Small businesses have really hit it off in recent years. There are numerous success stories of people walking out of poverty thanks to microfinance. 
I want to affirm the important role that microfinance plays in creating opportunities for those who most need them, allowing our small entrepreneurs the ability to create a viable business. Successful micro-businesses provide jobs as well as valuable products and services to their communities. What is clear is that microfinance and financial inclusion in general has grown and adapted considerably during its short history in Fiji. The awards are given out in three categories, two for best microfinance entrepreneur and one for best microfinance service provider. The awards night is on 6th November. Ritika Pratap, FBC News. A new survey by Transparency International has revealed that many young people in Fiji and the Asia-Pacific region see institutions in their countries as being affected by corruption. Many of the young people questioned also say they themselves have experienced corruption. Rishika Kumar has details of the survey. More than 1,000 people aged between 15 to 30 were interviewed in four countries including Fiji. What is more common across the countries is that young people face an integrity crisis as they enter the education system and the workplace. Young people are uh, exposed to corruption. They see corruption in, uh, in national life, in, in institutions. They know what should be done, that high levels of honesty should be uh, the characteristic of uh, leadership, but they also believe that they need to compromise on standards of integrity, of honesty, in order to be successful. Although the four countries have different levels of development and each has a distinct culture, they all share at least one dynamic, a large and growing percentage of young people aged between 15 to 29. In Fiji, 28 percent of the population is made of that age group. According to the report, more than 30 percent of young people have recently been confronted by corruption. Almost three quarters of the young people would engage in corruption for personal gain. More than 80 percent of young people believe they can take action against corruption. In corruption, so we have seen a lot of people that uh, taken to task for what they did. And for me as a youth, I think they've done a really good job with it. Because they have a, a new insight into the world we live in today. Well, they could try and encourage one another to do the right thing and to just um, not get pulled in by all this uh, corruption thing. Be a good citizen of Fiji. Transparency International has made key recommendations to governments. There is a call for resources to channels for young people to report corruption and develop technical resources in the National Action Plan to address integrity crisis. Education authorities have been urged to include ethics programs and projects in school curriculum as well as develop a syllabus for teaching integrity. Rashka Kumar, FBC News. Fiji's embassy in Geneva was officially opened by the Prime Minister of Wurenge Mbainimarama today. The newly established missions will handle international obligations under the United Nations, which Fiji is a signatory. Former High Court Judge Naza Chamim is Fiji's permanent representative in Geneva. Prime Minister Rear Admiral Wurenge Mbainimarama, while opening the mission, said Fiji has long needed to be in a better position to engage with international bodies, develop closer relations with them and benefit from their expertise. Coming up, new supermarket complex planned for Nausori. Bula FM, number 2 NSR. Bula! Bula FM, number 2 NSR. Welcome back. This is FBC News. A competency framework has been developed to make disaster management in the Pacific full-time and professional. Mikalonga reports a draft paper on the framework will be tabled at the 20th Regional Disaster Management Meeting underway in Lamy outside Suva. Disaster risk management experts feel that a competency framework creates a pathway for best skills and qualifications to plan, warn, manage and recover from disaster events in the Pacific region. If you take the example of uh, someone like a uh, first aider who might have done a, a St John's or a Red Cross course, 
and they might have an interest in uh, emergency management or disaster management, um, there's an opportunity for them to gain additional skills or almost have a career path that they can move into perhaps permanent employment with uh, emergency services or emergency management and, uh, and then gain extra skills from there. The proponents of the competency framework for emergency management practitioners feel the initiative is important for a very effective disaster management of any country in the Pacific. Very often we don't hear from the disaster manager until something happens and then there's a lot of focus on, on their activities. So what we want to do is to you know, push this more towards being a profession and a noble profession that people might want to take, like the first aider we talked about, and, and make it a, a career. Um, perhaps rather than a, a step in the public service. A former Fiji Fire Chief, Mark Reed, says they would also want to see that disaster risk management qualifications are recognised anywhere in the world. Some governments in the region, he says, already recognise the importance of having specialised people. Most governments already have uh, some sort of competency framework and here in Fiji there's a very robust national qualification framework. The competency framework will be presented to regional disaster managers on Friday. It will go for further consultation in the region before it's endorsed. Nikolonga, FBC News. The Nasori Town Council plans to build a shopping centre at the site of the current town market. A call for expressions of interest will be put out by the council this month. Savaratambo has the story. The existing market has an area of 4,400 square metres and with 56 years of lease still existing, it presents an idle business opportunity for the Nusori Town Council. Anyone who's uh, game enough to want to invest in the town should consider uh, making a proposal uh, to the council. Since Nusori Town caters for the three provinces, Naitasiri, Telewu and Rewa, the council believes there is demand for more service. Opportunities that are coming. This is a growing town. But uh, the downtown itself, Nusori itself, has to be uh, has to be built first. I, I see that the focus of our construction at the moment is concentrating on Nakasi, but we're looking at uh, the downtown because that's where the bulk of the people come in. Masirewa confirms the new market currently under construction will have about 20 stalls, and the council has already invited tenders from people who want to lease space at the new facility. Sabera Tambua, FBC News. Here's Jamie now with the day sports. Thanks, Jackie, and good evening. After the break, updates from the flying Fijians and Italy camps and Fiji Pearls start Pacific Netball Series with a convincing win. Details coming up. Gold FM is number one here in Sigatoka. Gold FM is our favorite radio station here in Lotoka. Gold FM is number one in Nelly. I love listening to Gold FM in Bar. We love listening to Gold FM, only the classic hits here in Suva. Here about Batu Kola, you immediately think of gold. I'm Josephine Sadi and I love hearing Gold FM. Gold FM, only the classic hits. Welcome back to FBC Sports. The Flying Fijians camp faces a tough task to find a solid combination for the test against Italy this weekend. Backline guru Andre Bell says the talented backline will be the strength of the team and should carry them to victory against a determined Italian side. Charlie and Tadakadaka reports. It's a race against time for coach John McKee to build a good combination for this weekend's clash against Italy. The talent pool within the squad, as well as the time factor, has made it a tough task for selecting a starting lineup. You understand that they're coming from all over the world and trying to get uh, the team to come together in, in such a short time is a challenge, but um, today's training was really positive and I think we're going to uh, move on from there. Making his return to international rugby after a lapse of three years, Sunia Koto will be expecting a tough time to reclaim the number two jersey from regulars to Apati Talimetonga and Willy Koso. It's always exciting to, to, have, uh, to have competition in the team. Uh, it all, I'm just taking it uh, in a positive direction and uh, contribute uh, positively to the, to the team. Uh, that's by throwing um, well in, uh, in scrums and overall play. It will be interesting to see how McKee and his staff select a squad from this group of players for the test. Zalendo Zakvak, FBC Sports. 
The strategy going into any rugby match can change very quickly while in play. And that's exactly why the Italian side is sticking to what they do best against Fiji. Strong forward drives with the occasional burst from their fleet-footed backline. Here's Elena McDonald with more from the Azuri camp. Italy's game plan against the Flying Fijians on Saturday is simple. We, we hope that our forwards uh, uh, will will uh, will do a, a good a good uh, match in the in the there in the off forward to 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 do that uh, all the players Fiji stay there and not uh, on the on the field. But what will make this game an interesting one is the fact that the newer players will be out to prove a point to coaches to be considered for next year's Italy World Cup squad to England. Also our scrum, our uh, lineouts, uh, we, we hope that uh, we uh, we be able to take many, many, many balls to play. Also interesting is if this guy gets his call up this weekend, he gets to play opposite his former Fiji under-21 teammates. Uh, for example, Malakai Lavuro, uh, Rabul, I played with him uh, the Fiji under-21 in, uh, in um, 2004 when we went to Samoa together. Uh, Wame Lewaravu is another rep who he's rubbed shoulders with too. For grammar school under-19 in 2001 when we won the Dins Trophy for the first time. I uh, also played under-21 with him in 2002. But uh, yeah, the uh, game against Fiji is always tough. They're big boys, they're very, very physical. And um, yeah, we're looking forward to a, great, to a great contest. There's many reasons to be at Saturday's clash at the ANZ Stadium. It's the first test at home for the Flying Fijians and the Italians will be blooding new reps as they build up to next year's World Cup. It's the Italian forwards versus the Flying Fijians attack. If anything, this is guaranteed to be a cracker of a match. Elena McDonald, FBC Sports. The Vodafone Fiji Under-20s got a wake-up call to the Junior World Championship campaign after the 48-19 loss to Wales yesterday. But officials are certain that this will become the rallying point for the players to improve on heading into the next clash against France. Talenta Dakadaka has more. It was not the start the baby flying Fijians had in mind, especially as they conceded one of the fastest tries in world rugby. But hitting back with three tries of their own showed a determination and grit that will be needed against remaining pool opponents, France and Ireland. We were happy with uh, what the boys achieved uh, uh, yesterday, uh, despite we lost the game. Uh, there was a lot of things that, uh, you know, uh, positive things that we get out from that uh, game. Uh, for us to, you know, to score our three tries against um, Wales, that's uh, uh, one of the achievements that we achieved. The scrum was the biggest letdown for the national side and resulted in two penalty tries for the Dragons. Yeah, that's uh, one of the places that um, the coaches will work on two days before our next game against France on Friday. Uh, and I believe too that uh, that's where um, the France and the uh, Irish will uh, try to attack us uh, on that uh, set piece, especially on the scrum. The players had a recovery session today and resumed their training tomorrow for the must-win game against France. Talento Dakadak, FBC Sports. The Fiji Pearls managed their convincing win in the Pacific Netball Series opener against the Cook Islands in Rarotonga today. The Julie Hornwick coach side led 34-14 at halftime and went on to hammer the host 58-36, dominating each quarter and running their full bench. Our ladies are out to retain their PNS crown, but more importantly, ensure they book a spot for next year's World Netball Championship in Australia. Fiji's next match is tomorrow afternoon against Samoa. And that's it from Sports Tonight. Good evening. The Agriculture Ministry is reviving farms in the Central Division through its Flatland Development Program. With help from the Finance Ministry, they were able to buy a digger and a 10-wheeler truck for the project. The vehicles will be used by the Extension Division. Drains will be dug in the Lakena Irrigation Area, while desilting will be done on drains in Thailevu, Rewa, Navua and Cerro Namosi. Principal Agriculture Officer Central Tepola Seniloli says there is lots of flat land in the division which is ideal for planting fruited vegetables. This is for Flatland Central Division. 
from all farmers. As long as we are on the lowlands, on the flats, we are covered in this. But it is going out in phases. Your respective um, officers, the technical officers, your locality field officers will be advising you, you know, of the works, the major works that will be undertaken by the, uh, or under the Flatland Development Program. The Flatland Program was implemented in 2007. It was a cloudy start to the day in the west and that later cleared to find weather by the afternoon. Suva, Savasav and Lombasa reported showers during the day. On the point on Vanua level recorded the highest rainfall of 31 millimetres till 9am today. Temperatures were in the low to mid 20s except Nandi, Laotoka and Ba hitting 30 degrees by 3pm today. More fine weather is expected in the west tomorrow. Lambasa and Suva can expect fine weather in the afternoon, but expect the temperatures to fall a notch or two lower. Keep those umbrellas and warm clothes out for Thursday with cooler temperatures expected. Recapping the top stories. LTA to suspend the licenses of about 60 notorious offenders. More focus on disaster management and Reserve Bank launches microfinance awards to recognize small businesses. This week's poll question we're asking, do you feel safe traveling in public service vehicles? Visit our FBC website to take part. Remember, you can send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email citizenseyes at fbc.com.fj or share it with us via Facebook page FBC News. And if you're on Twitter, follow and tweet us your news tips at FBC News or simply hashtag FBC News. That's all from us tonight. Join us again tomorrow evening. Until then, good night.